Hello, welcome to this episode of Tech in 10. Today, my colleague Henry Sock will be talking with Michael Silver about new developments in CT technology. Although this technology has been in wide use for decades, it remains a key component of imaging for multiple clinical service lines. It is also a technology that continues to undergo rapid change as new applications are developed. What are the key items you need to take into account if your organization is considering purchasing a new or replacement scanner today? Let's listen to what our clinical experts have to say about the future of this technology. Michael, good afternoon. Thanks for being here today. Yeah, good to be here. Uh, we we want to talk about CT today. And um, CT is an issue that comes up with a lot of RST2 clients. We get questions about that all the time. It's a technology that's been around for quite a while now. But, and I understand that you've just returned from one of the key meetings, CT meetings in the country this year that talks about developments in that modality. So if I were a healthcare executive considering the purchase of a CT scanner today or the replacement of a CT scanner, what are the critical things that I need to think about in making that decision? Well, first of all, it's important to realize that CT is one of the most robust diagnostic technologies that you have in the entire hospital. And when you're thinking about what you need for radiology, you should be thinking about what features does that CT scanner have to have to meet the needs of your clinical services and their strategies going forward in the market? What do you need for cardiovascular? What do you need for cancer services? What does the ED need? Neuroscience, what do they need? So once you understand those features, you can start to think about what kind of CT platform you need to acquire. Mm -hmm. But if what you're looking for is a basic bread and butter type of cross-sectional imaging CT scanner, that does 90% of, of what the country needs, uh, which may be 100% of what a given hospital or site of care needs, uh, then, then a 16 slice or a 32 slice 16 detector CT scanner may be exactly what you need. And those are great values because you can buy those today for under $400,000 and they used to run a decade ago for a million too. So those are really great values in the marketplace. On the other hand, if what you're looking for is a scanner that is able to perform a scan more quickly, which means a shorter breath hold for patients who might be trauma patients in the ED who can't hold their breath, or a large geriatric population, then you need a scanner that has more detectors. Uh, that could be a, a 32 or 64 detector scanner that could do 64 or even 128 slices. Uh, the price goes up for that when you do that. Uh, but they're able to complete a scan in a shorter period of time. If, on the other hand, you're looking for something that's capable of doing cardiac imaging, then your really only option is to acquire a super premium scanner, uh, which is going to cost you well over a million dollars. No matter what you do, you should be thinking about iterative reconstruction for that technology to cut the dose in half. You should be thinking about uh, a, a, a process that tracks your radiation dose exposure, uh, but if you're, what you're looking for is a real basic bread and butter type of scanner for a, a smaller value, volume site, uh, for an ambulatory general uh, imaging facility, uh, or a second or third scanner, a 16 uh, detector scanner is the best value in the market today. So, Michael, let's move to a discussion about clinical applications mm -hmm. now as they relate to CT. You know, for a long time, we were hearing about the uh, uh, advent of coronary CT angiography, mm -hmm. and that, that kind of discussion has died down. Maybe in your discussion about applications, could you tell us a little bit about where we are in coronary CT angiography and maybe others that are important to consider? Sure. Well, coronary CT angiography really uh, entered the marketplace commercially in uh, 2001. So it's now been 12 years that we've been, mm -hmm. been hearing about it. The packages have been available. In the meantime, the CT technology has evolved and gotten better the software analysis packages have gotten better, but the biggest limitation has been we haven't had trial data that tells us how do you manage patients using a CT, low risk, medium risk, high risk types of patients, and what is the role of CT relative to other diagnostic technologies. So finally, in the last few years, uh, we've had the results of a number of trials, like the Romicat 2 trial. Uh, there are other trials now looking at the role of CT as a gatekeeper for the cath lab, but we, we now have some good trial data that validates the role uh, or some of the roles of CT in managing cardiovascular patients. So perhaps the most robust role for CT today is based on the negative predictive value. Mm -hmm. 
of CT. And what that means is, if you look at the coronaries and they're clear, there's a 98 to 100 percent chance that in fact they are clear. There's nothing there. And, and trials like the Romicat 2 have shown that if patients come into the ED with atypical chest pain and you do a CT scan mm -hmm. and it's clear, they can be discharged. So the advantage in, in several of these trials has been that using CT, you can move patients through the, the ED more rapidly. Uh, you can discharge them more quickly. It's a lower cost to work them up. But the key is you can't view this as an isolated CT study. You really have to have this integrated with guidelines into how do you manage cardiovascular patients for the organization? What are the standard workups that you're going to do based on the results that you get? Mm -hmm. So it really needs to be integrated into, into cardiac care. And if you have that, it can be a very effective tool for low-risk patients and, and moderate-risk patients. Excellent. And then the other big discussion mm. that we always get around is, is the use of CT and stroke care. So what's going mm. on in terms of CT and stroke right. these days? The, um, uh, the uh, American Stroke Association and the American Heart Association uh, earlier this year published comprehensive guidelines for the management of acute stroke patients. Uh, and CT and MR are both part of those, of those workup guidelines. However, if you have a site that is a comprehensive stroke center and they want to be on that more aggressive front end of technologies and, and clinical application guidelines, I would suggest that they familiarize themselves with the recent publication from Mass General uh, in which they published their acute stroke algorithms for managing uh, the acute stroke patient. And in that guideline, uh, they use both CT and MRI uh, first CT, two CT uh, studies, and an MR study to identify uh, patients who have, who have a, an embolic stroke and patients who are candidates for an interventional therapy to uh, improve their outcomes. And by adopting these guidelines at Mass General, they've been able to both decrease uh, CT and MR exams for certain populations of patients. So they're adding more value, they're improving outcomes, uh, and they've identified some, some uh, possible biomarkers uh, that may be important in projecting the outcomes of patients along with these results. So for someone who's thinking of having that kind of comprehensive uh, stroke center, uh, we would suggest that they take a, a look at that published paper that came out a few months ago. So the, the combination uh, of both modalities, it's, CT and MRI. It's CT, it's, uh, CT first, uh, non-contrast CT, then a uh, contrast CT, than a uh, diffusion-weighted imaging study for MR. What that means is you're funding and managing a, a C, an MR scanner and a CT scanner 24-7. So finally, Michael, we should probably talk about futures in CT. What do you see on the horizon over the next three years that are important for our clients to consider? I think over the next three years, we're going to hear about breast CT scanners. Uh, specifically, we're going to hear about breast CT scanners with new types of detector te technologies that might find a home on whole body scanners at some point in time. But at this point in time, those are, these are really research uh, prototypes, clinical prototypes. They're not going to be mainstream at all over the next three, four, five years. Okay. So they're, they're something we'll hear about, but they're not clinical systems not to be concerned about. Not something for consideration at this point. Correct. Right. And then the other big issue that we hear about is spectral CT. Where are we with that? Spectral CT is uh, a, an application that's sort of in, in search of the killer app. It's a super premium technology. It involves uh, doing clinical imaging at multiple different energy levels, uh, which gives us a better characterization of tissue. It's a problem-solving technology uh, that, can, that can be used in uh, neuro or, or, or cancer-related imaging. But it also, in commercially available systems, it, it either has limited fields of view or the workup, the clinical workflow, is, is slowed with this. So until that workflow is improved, until the field of view is, is opened up on, on all of the scanners, it's going to be limited. We, we don't have the killer app for that at this point in time. Uh, there are indications that it may have a role in cancer or cardiac, but it's not there yet. And it's for sites that are prepared to uh, be on that cutting edge of clinical research. Mm -hmm. So for most organizations, if we hear either of those terms, not ready for prime time yet, keep it on the radar screen for later down the road. It's not ready for prime time yet, but it has a great deal of potential down the road. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. 
As you've just heard, organizations considering the purchase of a new or replacement CT scanner should carefully assess the imaging capability that is required to support the clinical needs of your ED and service lines, especially cardiovascular and neurosciences. You may receive requests to consider adding breast CT or spectral imaging to your technology portfolio. Keep in mind that these are in early development and for most organizations should be on your watch list. Thanks for watching. Join us again for another Tech in 10 session.